Hey guys, Mike here. Thanks for watching my video. Today we got a pretty good sized basement floor we're doing. It's around 1,700 square feet. Got two loads of concrete. Both trucks got about 11 yards on them. And we're going to get this thing poured pretty quick, I think. We got hot water in the concrete. It's a pretty chilly morning. It's actually below freezing out. So you should be able to see a little bit of steam coming off that concrete as it, as it comes down the chute. It's got about 110 degree hot water in it today. Hey, let me know where you guys are from. Give me a shout out down in the comments. Where are you from? You know, where are you watching from? Who, who you are? Let me know what your name is so I can say hi back. I, I like to do that. See the steam coming off down the chute right there? So what we did was we took a look at the concrete, decided on uh, we need to give it a little small drink, get the slump up a little bit. We added some high range water reducer in this today so we can pour a pretty loose slump since the access for this was, the only access was right where the truck is. So we got to kind of pull the whole floor from one spot and we got to empty him out first, this one, the first one, and then we'll back that second one in right in the same spot and finish pouring it from there. So we're using, we got the 16 foot shootout today we're using, just kind of angling that around as we go. <clears throat> that big deep spot you see right there, that's for a chimney pad. That was probably about a foot thick, so we got to make sure we don't step in that with our boots. But it's just me, Luke, and Darren today getting this thing poured. We put a bunch of accelerator in the concrete too. We want to get it to set up. I mean, you can really see the steam now. So we can get a really nice power trial finish on it today, get it sawed. Because we got another big one we're doing tomorrow. And that, and that way we don't have to come back and get the saw cuts in tomorrow. We're going to try to, what we're trying to do is get him empty. Get, you know, all the 11 yards dumped right off him. Knowing that we got a very limited amount of time to get this stuff screeded because with the hot water and the accelerator, it does start setting up pretty quick. But that way we can get that second truck, get him out of here and get that second truck in there and, and mix in and so the loads aren't too far apart. We want these two loads to cure pretty close together so the finishing goes easy too. So I'm over there, I'm going to start magging some edges, shooting some pads in the middle, get our wet pads done. Darren and Luke are going to finish dumping this truck. That's what makes it real good about having a couple guys that just know what they're doing. And honestly, they don't care what they're doing as long as we get the job done. Um, Darren and Luke can just take right over. They can run the shoot, they can rake, they can shoot pads, they can mag edges, they can screed. So we all just do what needs to be done. And I think it ends up making for the whole process a little quicker a little easier a little faster and then uh, no one like I said no one really cares the only thing we all care about is just getting it in getting it in as quick as we can not having to fool around with it that's my that's our little shoot trick there we we flip that shoot over and then we can shoot right over the, the top of the wall like that without having it drop too far make it puts it right where we need it so there's the first 11 yards now this thing it actually figured right around 22 yards and that was the most he could put on two trucks and I couldn't get a third truck so we're kinda hoping that you know we're not gonna run out obviously we're hoping we got enough and right where we are at is right about halfway so so far it's looking pretty good Darren and Luca just getting our center pads all struck and then what they're gonna do is they're gonna start screeding while I'm in there I'm trying to get that second truck in and I got a real narrow path to get him in and uh, the, the backfill on the outside is actually kind of soft so I don't want to get him stuck I don't want to get him off that path or he's gonna be stuck so we're trying to I'm trying to get him around there's actually a garage over there to the left that you can't see I'm trying to get him around the corner of that garage and then right where we need him and what we figured out was he just couldn't cut his wheels enough so I'm over there I'm turning him around I'm gonna try driving him in and then backing him up to this part back here where we need it so in the meantime you know Luke and Darren are just taking care of business down there they know that they got probably 10 or 15 minutes to get this screeded without the slump changing and if they don't get it screeded that once that slump starts changing boy the screeding gets a lot harder they, now they could have used the, we, we got the battery operated screed demon right there. They, I guess they could have used that right there if they wanted to. They just decided, you know, why, hey, we got the hand screed already in our hands. Let's just pull that bay down with the hand screed. 
And then over there where Luke is right now, that part was too narrow to put the the power screed. So he just pulled that out by hand too. Yeah, now Darren's gonna gonna grab the, the battery screed. If you guys haven't seen us use that yet, we use that on all kinds of floors like this. Works really, really good. The battery lasts a really long time. One battery, we'll do, I don't know, three or four of these floors on one battery, pretty easy. And then uh, one guy can one guy can screed, one guy can rake, so it kind of almost frees up a guy. You, yeah, you can see me up there now trying to get that guy in there. So I'll get him in, get him all mixed up, put the accelerator in him, and you know Darren and Luke are going to do as much as they can while I'm up there. The only thing about pouring really big, long foundations like this is, you know, you got to bow float it. So you got to stop and bow float. Otherwise, it'd be kind of cool just to get the whole thing screeded. We do have more handles we can put on there, but sometimes more handles is just a pain in the butt, too. Yeah, now that, now that I'm back there, Luke doesn't have to jump back and forth from side to side to do the raking makes it go just a little bit faster for Darren. So that second drop, he's mixing. We want him to mix and mix and mix. Get, make sure that accelerator is mixed in there really, really good. Give it some time to, to start working before we just start dumping him out. This was actually a pretty close ride from the concrete plant. It was about a 10 minute ride. So the concrete didn't have much time to, to mix in the truck. Oh, so in that case, you know, you want it to spin there for a good, good four or five minutes at least when you put accelerator in it, just to make sure that it gets mixed in really good. Especially if he's got 11 yards on it, it takes quite a while to mix up 11 yards. Yeah, I mean that that all looks like good backfill, but it's actually a, a lot of clay under it. It's really soft. So instead of, instead of, actually I couldn't get a pump today. We actually wanted to pump this at one point, but we couldn't get the pump. They're just too busy. Even with two or three weeks notice, we couldn't get a pump. And all's, all's the batch man had was two trucks for me, so we couldn't send the conveyor truck. A lot of times we'll use a conveyor truck that will reach out about 40 feet. But the trouble with a conveyor truck is it won't hold 11 yards. It'll only legally hold nine and a half. So we wouldn't have had enough concrete if we use a conveyor truck here. So we just decided we'd pull out the chute and just make it work. That's why we, we got them, I guess, when we need them. We'll make it work. It actually, you know, with a high range water reducer, you can see it doesn't it doesn't make it too bad. And that stuff kind of slides right on that that plastic. So it's it's not too bad as far as the pulling goes. The thing with the chute is, you know, it's just takes a little bit longer to get it moved where you wanted it versus the conveyor, you can, it'll go right where you need it and then the conveyor operator moves the conveyor for you. Same with the pump operator. You know, the pump operator moves the boom wherever you need it to go. Here, you actually got to stop and take time and move the chute. Which, hey, if that's what you got to do, that's what you got to do. But, you know, when you got accelerator in this stuff, <laughs> you know you want to be hustling so even though we don't look like we're hustling we know we know we got a limited amount of time we're we're actually trying to keep going as consistent as we can there's styrofoam under that plastic too if you guys notice it's for most towns where we are in Maine, it's it's kind of like code, the state code. You have to have two inches of styrofoam under your floor, whether you're going to heat the space or not. They just, the state makes you put it under there. So, and that stuff's really expensive. It's a four by eight sheets, just about forty bucks. So, you, you know, it just that adds up on a on a house, garage, breezeway. I mean, there's thousands of dollars right there just in styrofoam. That, you know, years ago we didn't have to do that. So, uh, you know, is it really necessary? I don't know. Probably not really necessary. Probably not a bad thing for it, but 
kind of you don't have a choice if you've got a code enforcement officer that's going to come check it then you got to have it down I'm over there with a the grade stick so you, the laser set up you can see it over there to the right hanging down inside the wall so I'm using the grade stick just to check and make sure there's a there's actually a drain way back in that far corner and we want to make sure that moving the, the floor towards that drain just has a tiny bit of slope towards the drain and not not any high points in between where I am right now in the drain so that's why I'm making sure I get all my my pads right my checks right and we X that when it's right on grade where we need it so that pad I'm making there now right there I just circled that's just a little bit lower than the one that Luke and Darren are striking off and then I'm over there magging around the floor drain so Darren will come out of that place where it's sloped he'll come out of there with that hand screed and then Luke and I will be over here we'll finish this up with the with the vibra screed This is how most of our pours go. You know, when we're work, we're working for the foundation guy here. The foundation guy's LaJoy Brothers, so they hire us to do all their floors like this, their residential floors. Um, and you know, I don't know how many they give me a year, but it's I don't, they give me a, about a hundred a year, probably like this. So we always have a list going with them. So we'll jump from this one, we'll jump on another one tomorrow, then another one the next day, and then. You know we have multiple contractors that we work for general contractors builders you know so we have lists from all those guys and that doesn't include any of the homeowner calls we get from just just regular homeowners that want work done for patios pool decks stamp concrete you know whatever so it's been just crazy busy these last few years and I don't know how we do it but somehow we get through it get done pretty much everything we need to get done there's a lot of people that that I I don't get to just because we can't get to but we try to do as much as we can with what we got for for guys you know the three of us can do at least one of these big floors a day and sometimes we'll do two projects a day but um, it's been busy you know even even through everything everybody's been going through it's been busy I like how that silhouette on the wall of the concrete truck with the Sun and that's really really cool um, Probably don't see that very often. They actually got a garage up there, then another upper piece. We did that the day before because we can only get two trucks yesterday too. So otherwise we we probably would have done everything in one day here if we could have gotten enough concrete trucks to do everything, but it just worked out. So two trucks yesterday, two trucks today, and we got the project finished up. So at least these people can start building now. Darren worked his way back into a corner. We'll, we'll drop him down a ladder here and he can take out his footprints and then we'll pull that ladder up and he can get out of there. So that's it guys. I mean that's how we pour a big basement floor with just the three of us. Um, comment down below again where you're from, who you are. I'll, shout, I'll give you a shout out back if I can on the next video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.